Now, I may have made owls and bird creatures my entire personality as an adult, but when I was a little kid, I was obsessed with fairies. I was definitely one of those kids. I had this one book, uh, one of the Shirley Barber books, which I think was Rainbow Magic. I read that so, so much, and I distinctly, like, vividly remember staring into all of the illustrations and just getting lost in them. Like, the way everything looks like it's sparkling or glistening, everything just looks so alive. Before I get carried away waxing poetic and getting lost in nostalgia, hello! I miss Twisted. I make cosplay and makeup and weird little experiments. While I do love these Shirley Barber books, this particular project was inspired mostly by an artwork by an artist called Run Me In. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. They just popped up randomly on my Instagram one day with this fantastic illustration of like a, a fey king and I loved this depiction that kind of reminded me of the the illustrations of Shirley Barber but with like an edge of something more dangerous and more cunning and very bit more insecty how his wings and, and creations are literally growing out of his face. I've also dabbled in like creating different fey things uh, throughout the years with me experimenting with makeup but nothing quite like this and I kind of want to bump it up to a level of detail I haven't really used before. What I do have is a couple of different supplies. It's mostly going to be paper that I'm going to paint into those wings and then attach and then start doing all the makeup. I'm also going to play around with these bits which is basically like just sheets of vinyl that have that kind of iridescent texture to them. Now I've used some things like this before for a Carnival Row inspired look and it was really really fun so I may end up doing something with this that feels similar. I do want to keep to like green and pink and magentas as the main colours just because I I really want this to be super super bright colored but still a little bit threatening like a poisonous insect. Venomous insect? Both? The aim here is definitely beautiful and alluring and vivid but could definitely kill you. I'm going to skip forwards for a moment because I really want to show these off but I did the paper wings with watercolor paints and like look at how lovely these turned out. Like the colors are so vibrant. All of these dark white lines here I actually did using masking fluid. So you want to know how I learned how to do this? I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you about Skillshare. That's right, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is a massive online learning community. You will find so many different lessons and pathways to explore in all sorts of creative areas. From watercolor painting, like I did with this one, to illustration, productivity, graphic design, and so much more. Skillshare classes are led by industry pros with real experience. And an active community of members to cheer you on. People like Yasmina Creates, whose lessons in watercolor are used to try and pick up these skills to create these things, including how to use masking fluid. I loved her hands-on approach, sort of encouraging play and experiment through her lessons rather than like rigid sets of rules. There are learning paths where lessons are kind of curated so you can build up multiple individual lessons into like an overarching skill. I've been looking at the learning path, your creative business, build it, brand it, launch it. Because while I have somehow turned cosplay into my business, up until now I've just kind of been making it up as we go along. And I've already discovered some new strategies and skills that I can use. If you want to turn your passion into a side hustle or a whole career like I did, there are so many options to explore. The first 500 people who use my link will get one month free trial of Skillshare. And I will put that link in the description below. While you guys are checking that out, I'm gonna rewind a little bit to bring you on the journey of figuring out what the heck is up with watercolors. All right guys, we are just gonna jump straight into it. I have got some office paper here, which I have sandwiched two pieces together for each of these, just to make them a little bit stronger. And I'm just gonna roughly sketch out like some butterfly wing shapes here. I've decided to paint the wings in watercolor just because it kind of taps into that like dreamy lush landscapes that I remember seeing as a kid in all of these children's books. This weird stuff I'm putting on the painting is masking fluid. Basically it's going to keep that area of the page white while I'm painting it with watercolor so I can take it off later and leaves behind like a nice crisp white line. Now I'm actually not too worried about how this section is going to turn out because these wings are actually just like a practice round. Because I haven't used watercolor since I was a child I kind of just want to play with it a little bit, get the feel for the colors and the textures and how everything blends together before I start to use it on my real wings. I will warn you guys if you want to try this for yourself and you haven't used it before this stuff smells real bad. 
bad, which is exactly what clued me into the fact that it's basically like a liquid latex. That's why I'm kind of using a silicon tool to apply this instead of like a brush because it would completely destroy any brush you used this on. All right, now for the fun part. If only I'd left the actual masking fluid to dry completely because a lot of this, I ended up like pulling it up because I was way too impatient. You can kind of see there's still like a fair few bits on there that are still wet. And I thought I'd be smart enough to just go around it, but that was really dumb, guys. Let your paints dry. <laughs> now I'm not gonna try and turn this into a tutorial and act like I know what I'm doing with watercolor. Like I said, I haven't done this since I was a kid. This was all just vibes. I will say though, it's probably a good idea to get some actual watercolor paper. It actually worked decently on this plain office paper, but it was definitely like wrinkling the paper slightly. You can tell that this paper isn't designed to be wet. I've learned some valuable lessons in this test run. You can kind of see like I've had a lot of bleeding. Like this has still got the masking fluid on. This has been taken off. A lot of bleeding going on throughout and then like bits of the paper where it's actually coming up as well. Long story short, both for the masking fluid layer and the paint layer, I am just being far too impatient and I'm trying to like, you know, paint over it when the masking fluid isn't fully dry. And then I'm trying to take off the masking fluid before the paint's dry. So I just need to chill the heck out when I do the actual things. But apart from that, like texture wise, this is looking fantastic. So here's all my wing pieces cut out, ready for painting. I'm kind of going with like Luna Moth inspiration in terms of the colors and shapes. And you'll see later on, of course, that I've added some pink in there. I kind of wanted to have like a Venus flytrap kind of inspiration too. Each of my wing pieces had this little eye design, much like a, a moth or a butterfly would have like fake eyes on their wings. Except I purposely made a lot of mine more of like an eclipse shape, like to mimic human eyes. Not that my impromptu project where I'm just trying to recapture some of my early childhood nostalgia really need some deep lore, but I'm kind of just imagining that like fey creatures would be trying to confuse humans as opposed to other animals. Anyway, that's my totally unnecessary justification for why all of my wings have got human shaped eyes. Okay, so I've had a little bit of a play around with these now with the wings and like obviously these look scrappy, like I haven't even finished taking off the, the fluid with these, but that looks great. Funnily enough, the reason why that looks great is because I waited until the fluid dried before I painted it and then I waited for the waited for the paint to dry fully before I took off the um, the masking fluid. So I have these really lovely crisp lines, which I don't have on any of these because I was impatient as heck. So I've learned my lesson. All of my little wings and things are now fully masked and I'm gonna put these outside. No, it's windy outside. I'm gonna lose these. I'm gonna put these near a window. I'm gonna let them dry. I'm gonna go find a video game. It's probably gonna be Baldur's Gate. Who am I kidding? Listen guys, I know we're only like a few minutes into this video and I've already mentioned childhood nostalgia so many times, but goddamn, painting with watercolors was so much fun. I just find something really satisfying about the way they blend together and the color just goes on so thick, like straight from the start. It just feels nice, you know? So take home message here. Maybe you should go and do an activity you really liked as a child. Like this brought me like a lot of serotonin, just zen, good vibes. Anyway, you can see I've kind of learned from my trials to like layer up several different colors and not be afraid of like the colors not blending all together that well because they do dry a little bit more subtle anyway. So I kind of had some fun layering up some like lime green with this darker forest green as well to create some texture and dabbing off the excess like you see here. It's a shame that a lot of the colors still didn't dry as vivid as I'd liked and the camera really didn't do it justice either, but they still look fantastic even here. Okay, so it is literally the next day so I know for sure that these are 100% dry. So now comes what I believe is the fun part. Now I've done a couple of these just off camera to test them out. Essentially all of the masking fluid now can come off and you can like use a silicon tool and kind of rub at it the same way as you would like, you know, with a scratch lotto ticket, I guess. But I'm gonna just like use my hand like this. I found this really effective because you can kind of get the edge. You can see that coming off here. And then if you're lucky and you've got to be careful because you don't want to destroy that paper, but you can kind of just pull. And this is so freaking satisfying. Like this is great. It reminds me of like when you get like new electronics and you pull the little screen protector off at the start. It's just like, oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Ah, and look at how nice that looks. That is looking fantastic. Like that is so smooth and clean. Oh, let's get this eye. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the eyes. I think I'm gonna paint them. Yes, look at that. Amazing. 
It has bled a little bit. I'm not too worried about that. I think it's kind of a cool effect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to be like dreamy and whimsical. That's my excuse anyway. One of the reasons it's bleeding a bit is because of course I have used like office paper, not watercolor paper. Like watercolor is not designed for this kind of paper. So I'm just glad that it worked overall, but I wonder like if I maybe I should have just gone straight through a proper watercolor paper and maybe that would have saved some of the bleeding, but I'm not really that worried about it. Like look at how good this looks. Last big stretch here. Can I get it all in one go? Ah, that looks so good. Yeah, nice. Definitely a little bit of bleeding up here. I don't care. That looks great. I love this. There's all these little tiny ones that I can't quite just get like by pulling off. So I'm just going to kind of rub at them and it seems to do the job. With all the fun of peeling off that masking fluid out of the way, the last touch up was just filling in a lot of these eyes with a sort of pinky color and a couple little pink lines on some of the other white sections just because I felt like it. I kind of debated painting in fully realistic eyes, but for starters, I don't think I'm that good of a painter. But also I kind of wanted to keep that more symbolic feeling. So I just kind of went with all of these little moon shapes to kind of represent like pupils or just like the reflections of eyes. It seems to be a pretty common shape on a lot of butterfly wings anyway. And hey, full transparency, I did cheat a little bit and went back over some of these white lines with an acrylic white just to brighten them up a tiny bit just because I did have so much bleeding on some of these wings. Okay, so these are my finished wings in the watercolor, which look absolutely fantastic if I do say so myself. The only one that's a little bit dodgy is this one. I've tried to paint over a little bit with the white. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this wing. I may just have to like throw these ones out or like cut them a little bit short, but I spilled a little bit of that purple purple color. Like you can see, I smudged some on myself and then just accidentally handled this one. So, you know, that's not too bad though. Like all of these, I think there's going to be plenty to cover my face and whatnot. It actually seems to look a little bit more vibrant against like the white table here. So I'm wondering whether I want to kind of tap into that and do a fair bit of my makeup in a stark white to bring out the colors of these wings, but tons and tons of like smaller pieces that I can layer up and just hopefully have like my whole face just covered in in wings, so yeah. Okay, so I found something really, really special. I bought this on eBay just a few days ago because someone was selling it secondhand. This is the book I was talking about. It's a shitty version of it. Like it's small and like, you know, paperback and they've cut out bits of the story, which is heartbreaking to me. Like, why would you do this? But the good thing is like all of these beautiful illustrations are still in there. It, this is really hard. So this picture here was one that like absolutely captured my imagination. Like I would look at this and kind of imagine which fairy I would be out of the ones gathered there. And like, there's this wonderful one at the end of like, them having a party and having like all these different fairy foods that look absolutely delicious and this is a great example because everything here looks glistening and vivid which is exactly the kind of thing that I wanted to get with these with this project. Hey, it's Future Charlotte here because I completely forgot to talk about what I actually did to the vinyl before this next section. So basically I've got this sort of cool glossy holographic vinyl and what I've tried before is creating like a frosted vinyl and all I've done is like spray it with a matte varnish to create like a frosted effect instead of this high gloss. That's it. That's all I wanted to mention. So I just thought of something I want to try because this is that frosty thing going on but all of these are going to look really flat because they're paper and, and sheets of things. I want to try putting some UV resin on this and see if I can make like some water droplet style things, right? I don't know if this is going to work. We're going to find out together. I just kind of thought in my head like how cool the texture would be if it works. Oh, if this dries as good as it looks right now, that's very promising. Let me see if I can hold this up to the camera without f***ing it up. Can you see what I mean? Because this is UV resin, so it's safe for me to use inside. Mmm, I like this. Quick safety briefing, guys. Uh, even though UV resin is much, much safer for you than like a two-part epoxy resin, you should still use it in a ventilated space. I have a absolutely gigantic window in my office, so I had that wide open during this whole section. Honestly, in hindsight, I probably should have worn my respirator as well, just for the extra safety it really can't hurt. Also, safety gloves. Do not let this stuff touch your skin uh, and probably like safety glasses or goggles too. Uh, let's just chalk this all up to do as I say, not as I do. But at least I did not let my skin touch any of this stuff, so I was okay. You can definitely get a feel for how the light plays off these different textures just by moving this around. But when I took it outside to cure in the sun, once that was finished, this looked absolutely fantastic. Look at this beautiful textures. This is so shiny. It just makes my brain happy. You guys, this 
worked really well. Like, look at this. That looks insane. I'm hoping it still looks this good when I cut it out and try and use them. That's very promising. I like that. I'm even thinking when I've painted up the paper wings, I could use that resin and like put little tiny like droplets on it, like little droplets of water. Like it's just everything's dewy and so is the faking. Oh, I'm so excited for this. That is very promising. Like, oh my God, with the shine. Yes. <laughs> I did end up trying the little dots of resin to kind of replicate dewdrops on the watercolor wings. I, I think they looked kind of cool. They weren't really picked up in camera, but I liked how they looked in person. My initial thoughts with this were to do one big look, right? That uses all these different pieces combined together. I actually think that's gonna be too much. So I kind of decided while I was doing this to separate this into two distinct fairies, fairy king and fairy queen. Makes sense, right? Because I think that these and these are kind of two separate vibes. So I'm gonna do a fairy queen that has all of these beautiful iridescent pieces and kind of hard to see on the camera, but like all of my little tiny freckles and little iridescent pieces that I've made. And then all of these are another. So I'm gonna lay these out so I can kind of visualize it before we get started. Okay, we have our two parts here. Okay, now we finally have our king and our queen. So the king is looking great. You can see those dew drops are coming up, but they're really subtle. So they might catch the light every so often, but they don't take away overall from the look. Over here, we have all our parts from our queen and you can see like I've got the torch on my camera at the moment, but there is gonna be some fantastic listening effects. I didn't mean to, but this one's almost giving me like mermaidy vibes and I'm kind of okay with that. Like that looks great. I'm loving that. All right, I'm gonna do a quick test run where I like attach a bunch of these to my face just so I know kind of where everything's gonna sit because I think once I start getting like all of my makeup on for real, if I start sticking these to my face and then I don't like where the position is, I've already kind of ruined the makeup with bits of glue in the wrong place. I'll be cutting into these. Won't be able to see probably because of the contacts. So I want to get a good idea of the shapes that I want and the positioning of everything before I start doing it like for realsies. Now the two wings that go straight on the sides of my face, I actually had some thread sewn through the top of it. You can barely see it here. That's just to take some of that weight just so it doesn't sag down on my face. But for the rest of these, they just had some spirit gum on the edges and that was all it needed to stick to my face. Just remember if you're using spirit gum for yourself, to let it get a little bit tacky before you stick it onto your face. They will stick so much better. For positioning, I wanted to have some like close to the center of my face and some further back just to kind of create like some dimension and depth. It's just occurred to me how stupid it was to do the trial run of like gluing all these things on. Now I've got them all perfect and I'm like, oh, well, why don't I just do the makeup now? I've already got the things stuck to my face. But like for starters, I'm wearing this and I don't want to be wearing that. I want to do things over my shoulders with makeup. Uh, yeah, but I, I feel like I'm just kind of like double handling now, giving myself more work now that I've stuck all these on, go take them off and then put them all back on when I'm doing the makeup. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Anyway, yeah, this was dumb. I'm glad I did it anyway. It's not gonna take me too long to stick everything back on, but like, man, I really didn't think about streamlining this at all. I'm going to see if I can take off this very gingerly over these bits and uh, see if I can change my top so I can just get straight into the makeup because I just, I don't want to take all this off. It looks cool and I don't think I'm going to get the positioning any better than this. Okay, guys, we are back. I've got my contact lenses in. I have managed to change my top. I had to re-glue some of these, but like not all of them, which was great. I have had a gigantic mug of tea, which was like 50% honey. So now we're ready to get into it. Let's go. I am going to start with just getting like white on my face everywhere. That's going to be my base. I'm using Meron Clown White Light. It's one of my favorite products to use for uh, white because it's super opaque, as you can see. And the original Meron Clown White has a really awful texture. It's so tacky. This is a little better. It's still not perfect. I still haven't found a like a product for white face paint that I still really, really love. But this is the closest I've gotten, so I'm just gonna fill in all my spaces around the wings. I didn't really want to do this before gluing on the wings anyway, because spirit gum will not stick to this makeup, so you kind of want to have it on bare skin first. In today's episode of Do As I Say, Not As I Do, make sure you put a priming layer on before you start applying face paint. It will make it last much longer and tends to be a bit smoother when it's finished too. You can see I switched to like a smaller brush here just to get all those in-between 
clean bits with the petals. Now, if you've been following my work for a while, you know that my favorite thing with makeup is just to over contour the heck out of my chin to give me a jawline that I wish I had. And today will be no exception. So it's just a plain matte deep green eyeshadow that I'm using to contour around my jawline here. I realized I wanted something a little bit more sturdy around the sides of my neck just because I didn't really want that eyeshadow rubbing off on my white top. So this color here is actually a green foundation from Sunset Makeup. If you're a cosplay of any sort and you haven't gotten onto this, I really, really recommend it. It literally has the consistency of foundation. So it is just a really useful product. So I'm kind of using it as a base for all the areas I'm going to contour, like my nose and my cheekbones. And I get a lot of creases around my eyes. So I actually use this around my eyes. It stayed a little bit better than just a standard eyeshadow and kind of worked like an eye primer. I'm adding in a black eyeliner pencil around my waterline and my lids, but I decided against adding any more like fake eyelashes or cat's eye liner just because I did want this one to feel a little bit more masculine. And then I'm coming back in with that eyeshadow just to blend out all those hard edges I created around my contouring and my eyes and my cheekbones. I decided to put a little bit of pink eyeshadow under my cheeks here just because I realized that like I wanted the pink of the wings to come onto the face a little bit as well. And for final touches, I did want to bring those white lines from the wings onto the face because I think that would really tie everything in together. I first tried with this like white eyeliner that I also got from Sunset Makeup, but to be honest, it's not great. I've really struggled to find any kind of like white liner that doesn't kind of look a little bit crappy. So for most of this, I ended up going back to my Meron Clown White Light and just using like a thin paintbrush to apply it. Okay guys, I think, I think this one's done. I don't wanna go too crazy with any fake eyelashes or like cat's eye wing liner because I do wanna keep it feeling a little bit masculine. So that's kind of my thoughts. And that's kind of why I went for a little bit more detail on the chin as well, because it kind of very loosely suggests like a beard or facial hair, right? This makes me incredibly happy. I like how this turned out. The dewdrops are pretty much like negligible. You can't see them at all, but they don't detract from it, which is, I guess, the most important thing. I don't know why this makes me so happy and why I just suddenly had the need to make some sort of fairy creation, like channeling my childhood nostalgia. But I'm so glad I did because like, I'm so happy with how this turned out. Like this looks creepy, it looks beautiful. I feel like a Venus flytrap about to like trap some mortal prey. I'm super into it. I hope you really liked it as well. We're gonna start on the next one. Okay, it's the next day. I have still got a bit of a tinge on my neck from the previous one with the face paint. I don't think that's gonna bother me too much. What I am realizing is I'm not gonna be able to just get away with sticking some spirit gum on the back of this and slapping it on my face. Partly because I think the vinyl is too smooth at the back, the spirit gum is not gonna stick super well to this. The other thing is this is much heavier than the paper pieces. So it's just gonna start like sagging down my face wherever I stick it. So I'm gonna have to mount these on some sort of like headband and have it like attached to that at the back so it still kind of sits flush against the face here but it's supported at the back here. The smaller pieces I can probably just stick these straight on my face. They'll be fine. So I gotta figure out something for these. So I honestly thought that the vinyl would not take well to the spirit gum. So what I have done for each of my pieces is I actually sanded the back of them just with a really coarse sandpaper to give it a bit of a rough surface so the spirit gum can stick to it. And that seems to have worked really well because this is like the largest piece and it's sticking really, really well. I thought I was gonna have to like use a headband or something like to hold the weight of it, but like, that is not going anywhere. I'm thoroughly impressed, so we can get going. Okay, these are the contact lenses I decided to go with. They just kind of looked cool. I wanted to go with a color that wasn't like pink or green like we focused on yesterday. And like my little iridescent pieces have got like a lot of different options kind of coming through. So I thought these would kind of work with it. And then of course I do have the wig. I'm not too fussed about exactly how the wig is sitting because like it's really only there to cover any parts of my like bright orangey kind of hair that's gonna stick through between the fins. But that should be enough for my base. I'm gonna get stuck uh, sticking stuff to my face. I think I want this one like quite close into my face. Like this one isn't gonna be quite as far out as my other one. So 
so for foundation, I'm literally just going in with my like winter foundation, which is just the color of my skin right now, but a little bit paler. I was going to go with an unnatural skin color all over, but I kind of feel like with all the little bits I'm about to stick on, they're going to do all the heavy lifting in terms of like focal point, I guess. And then I can do some contouring with an eyeshadow color, which is going to at least suggest an unnatural skin tone, which I think between the two of them will be enough to kind of give the feel that I want. Wow, looking back at this footage, it really does look like I'm just putting white face paint on, but that is literally my shade of skin in winter. I am just the color of mayonnaise, guys. Once again, I curse my jeans for not giving me the sharp jawline I should have had, and so cheat with some purple eyeshadow. I'm gonna use this same purple eyeshadow around my cheekbones, behind each of the fins as well, to kind of give a bit of shading, and just in all of those spots that I would usually do contouring, so along the sides of my nose, under my eyebrows, under my cheekbones. Okay, my necklace took a little bit of wrangling to get on, but I think that is sitting nicely. I think the only thing left is just stick on all the little bits that I have to just cover the rest of the space. So I got a lot of gluing to do. Gotta get some fake eyelashes happening. I never get it so perfect the first time around. Okay, this is a bit where I'm just gonna start layering up pieces uh, and see how it looks. Okay, this is looking pretty promising. I think I need to muck around with the lighting a little bit to really make this pop, because I need, think I need some things like shining into it from the front rather than just plain white lights. Luckily, that didn't break entirely. It just kind of came off at the connector point in the middle. Not to toot my own horn too much here, but I love how this looks. This turned out really nice. I love how the light bounces off the holographic vinyl in different ways. I like how it looks kind of cold, like a drowned person almost. Like it's very much cold colors and not in like a welcoming way either. Like it definitely feels a little bit intimidating. I'm pretty happy with this. I think it worked all together really, really well. I'm interested to see what this looks like in the sunlight too. So I might try and take it outside and just see what the effect is. I love the variation in color you get from the vinyl both inside with the lighting and outside in the sun. I will say though, once it's outside, the makeup on the face is more subtle and it kind of looks more like I'm just a human going to a festival rather than like a creepy fey mermaid creature. But overall, I'm really happy with both of these. The fey king definitely has that insecty element or like a plant and the fey queen with all those iridescent pieces feels like a mermaid that's just coming out of the ocean. My aim for this project was to capture that lush, dreamy nostalgia element of fairies, the ones I read about in books like Rainbow Magic, and combine that with my modern understanding of Fae as mysterious spirits that might be mischievous or worse, dangerous. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I was a little bit self-indulgent, like getting into my own nostalgia, but I know a lot of you guys grew up with like fairies and dragons and all that sort of thing too, so I hope it was still interesting for you as well. Please let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Massive thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this one. I also want to thank my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing, especially my ultimate supporters. Artemis, Dakota, Rakushin, Residual Images, Tamara, and Yuri. I would also like to thank these amazing patrons whose names are appearing on screen now. Patreon is actually the best way that you can support me to keep making ridiculous projects like this. So if you want to support my work or you want to see previews or work in progress pictures or other bits and pieces and sometimes entirely exclusive tutorials and projects, please come and join us. I will put the link to my patron in the description below. Thank you guys again so much and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Hey, so I'm just popping on one more time from the future in case you're wondering about like the audio and visual differences. It's a different camera. Anyway, the point is I was so salty about this version I went and looked to try and find the original one that I had as a kid and I found someone in Brisbane who was selling this one on eBay. This is the original 1996 version. This is the one that was so precious to me and like you can see the color difference like it's so much more lush and like alive. It doesn't have that yellowy tinge to everything. And like my favorite page actually looks like it's supposed to, like those beautiful vivid colors. It's really hard to hold up to the camera and still show my face, but you get the idea, right? Like it's so much more vivid and dreamy. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you my little moment of joy from actually getting my hands on this. That gave me so, so much, so much happiness. Uh, anyway, bye guys.